Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to worship on this Pentecost day here at Dwajak's First United Methodist Church. It's good to see everybody. Um, I have one announcement for you. We'll be worshiping at Forest Glen this afternoon at 2.30, and you all are welcome to come out and join us as we um, worship with the residents there. I would share more announcements with you, except that I forgot my announcement list and I forgot my bulletin. So, so I, I, I urge you to go ahead and look in your bulletin and see the other things in there that are important to you as the church. Harvey, you're raising your hand at me. Uh, I'd just like to thank all the people that came up yesterday to clean up the church. That oh. was pretty nice. Harvey is thanking everybody who came out yesterday to help with the church cleanup. We appreciate all the work that you put in in helping to keep our grounds look nice. I would invite you now to take a moment to greet those around you in the name of Christ. I'd like to make your way back to your seats. I've got one more thing I'd like to share with you before the call to worship. Make your way back to your seats. Everybody, have a seat. The Michigan Annual Conference held its conference in Grand Traverse last week or in Traverse City last weekend at Grand Traverse Resort. And um, Gloria Staten and I both went as representatives of our church. And I have a video that I would like to share with you that'll show you some of what we experienced last week. May 30th through June 2nd, more than 2,000 United Methodist clergy and lay representatives gathered from across the state. It was a time to renew friendships, celebrate mission and ministry, honor those who faithfully served, ordain new clergy, and discuss the future of the church. On Thursday, Bishop David Bard led opening worship with a time of remembrance and celebration. He then shifted gears to focus on this year's theme, Bold and effective leaders, wisdom, heart, and courage. Be leaders of wisdom, heart, and courage right here, right now, so that we can go from this place to help lead our congregations to be places where leadership of wisdom, heart, and courage is nurtured, so that we can be about the mission of God to make disciples of Jesus Christ so that people's lives can be different, so that the world can be different, because the world still needs to be different. Worship, led by lay and clergy Michigan Conference staff, also stressed the need for bold leadership. And I just want to say to my fellow laity, friends, if I can do this here at annual conference, you can surely do this in your local church, yes? On Friday, Becca Farnham, a Michigan Conference preacher's kid and current faculty member at Syracuse University in London, England, provided valuable insights on creating leaders. Women, 
persons of color, persons with different physical and emotional and mental abilities, and other minorities have perspectives and knowledges that are too often unheard. And good leadership requires intentionally listening to and amplifying those voices that aren't the loudest or the most regularly noticed. In the midst of the global debate on the future direction of the United Methodist Church, members to the annual conference wanted to know where those in attendance stood on decisions made during the general conference last February. Taking a non-binding straw poll, 31% of annual conference members favored staying with the traditional plan passed at general conference, while 69% preferred a conference that allows for, but does not require clergy to officiate at same gender weddings and the ability to ordain and appoint persons regardless of sexual orientation. The bishop acknowledged these are difficult conversations. I do think it matters how this gets interpreted. This is a vote of the people gathered in this particular place at this particular time. Members to annual conference also approved a measure by a two-thirds vote that indicated a desire to promote reconciliation and focus resources on missions, not trials and investigations based on sexual orientation. Finally, a similar two-thirds margin approved sending a petition to general conference that would create a central conference in the United States. If approved, United Methodists in the United States would be able to adapt church laws that affect them without input from other countries. Michigan Annual Conference members also elected clergy and laity representatives to general and jurisdictional conferences in 2020. They learned more about our Native American brothers and sisters, received wonderful reports of successful mission and ministry in Michigan, celebrated bold and effective leaders for their work to grow God's kingdom, and welcomed a new generation of faith leaders through the commissioning and the ordination of deacons and elders. To learn more about Annual Conference 2019, talk with your pastor or member to Annual Conference, or visit 2019.michiganumc.org. Any questions about what happened at Annual Conference this year? Um, speak with myself or with Gloria. We'd be happy to, to let you know what we witnessed and what we experienced and what we understand. Now, as we enter into worship, let's listen as the choir sings.
The spirit of truth is moving. The spirit of truth is speaking. The spirit of truth is with us. This time we'll do the opening hymn, hymn number 539, O Spirit of the Living God. confidence in God's love and mercy for us, let us confess our sins before God and before each other. Let us pray together. Abba Father, parent of us all, bind us together as your children. Free us from the chains of division and divisiveness. Unstop our blocked ears that we might listen and hear one another one another with understanding and compassion. Pour out unity and love so abundant through the power of your Holy Spirit that all resistance to a new Pentecost community may be swept away. Everyone who calls upon the name of God has been saved, is being saved, and will be saved. Amen. And now as we prepare to hear the word of the Lord, let us listen as the choir sings.
Before you all go and sit down, I understand that this is the last regularly scheduled appearance for the choir for this year, that you guys are done for the summer. And I wanted to let you know how much I appreciate the work you do each week, what you add to service each week. You're a blessing to the church and you're a blessing to each other. And Scott, we're all so grateful for the work that you put in, the leadership and the expertise that you provide the choir. So thank you very much. I sing in the choir, I'm the liturgist this month, and after the service I have to help consume some of that cake out there. <laughs> the, the first reading is from Acts 2, 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost come, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there was staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't, these all, aren't all these who are speaking Galatians? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthias, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Pyrogea, Pamplia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we heard them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, <clears throat> made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last day, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. We will sing, O oh, Worship the King, and by the way, the number is not 79, it's 73.
14 through 17. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If needed, we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. Our gospel reading this morning comes from John chapter 14, verses 8 through 17, and then 25 through 27. Please rise as you're able in honor of the reading of the gospel. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, Whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I'm going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Thanks. Please be seated. So we have a busy day today. Not only are we celebrating Pentecost, which is the event that most Christians recognize as the birth of the church, but we're also having communion, and we're celebrating Camelot and Jared's graduation from high school. So lots to do today. But you know, graduation's often seen as a time that marks both the end of a period of really hard work and dedication, and then the beginning of another period of life that will also require a lot of hard work and dedication. But it'll also be quite different as well. Many of the addresses that we hear that take place at commencement ceremonies point out that they're not marking the end, but as the name implies, they're actually marking a new beginning, the beginning of something new. And I think in some ways our celebration of Pentecost is somewhat like this. It's a celebration of past events that came to mark the beginning of something new, of something different. Now, the celebration of Pentecost began long before the beginning of the church. It is one of the three, I think it's the third of the three great festivals of Jerusalem and comes 50 days after Passover. And it celebrated the spring harvest with people coming into Jerusalem to sacrifice the first fruits of their harvest and it also celebrated the giving of the law to the people of Israel by Moses when they were wandering in the wilderness. Um, 
this giving of the law marked them as God's chosen people. So the gift of the Holy Spirit received by those early Christians was a gift that not only continued to identify them as God's chosen people, but it also expanded that gift beyond just the people of Israel to include all people. Now, the gift of the Spirit pushed people to step out of the boundaries that they'd drawn and to be in community with all people and to live out God's intentions with all of us here on earth. And I think in this way, the Holy Spirit empowers us to build the kingdom of God here and now. Now the people, all of Jesus' early followers, were gathered together in a house in Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost. This group was probably still hiding or at least laying low, given all that had happened just 50 days before with the execution and then the resurrection of Christ. So the scripture tells us that we heard Ott read earlier they're, they're, they're sitting, they're gathered in this house, and all of a sudden, a loud sound and a violent rush of rent, wind fills the house. And I think about it, it must have been really startling, maybe even a little bit frightening. Um, I know, like, occasionally in my house, a really strong gust of wind will hit the windows and make a loud sound, and it'll make me jump. And this actually came on into the house and touched everybody. In fact, it says that divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and rested upon them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Just as Jesus had promised earlier that the advocate, the Holy Spirit, the helper, would come to them. So the Spirit gave them the ability to speak languages other than their own, And the Spirit also must have driven them out of that house because suddenly they're among all the people who've come to Jerusalem, the pilgrims, the immigrants, people who've come from far away. Now, of course, pilgrims would come to Jerusalem to celebrate this holiday as on a regular basis because that was one of the things that they were commanded to do. But also Jerusalem was full of immigrants, was full of people who were there because of their association with the Roman Empire. And they, too, may well have been faithful Jews. Um, Most likely, all of these people would have been there, and they would have spoken Greek, because Greek was the language of the Roman army. Greek was the language of commerce, not unlike the way English has become kind of the common language that many in commerce speak today. And so these people are here, and all of a sudden, they began to hear the story of God's love and God's intentions for them in a language that they understood, not the utilitarian Greek that they all knew, but the language of their childhood, the language of their homes, their hearts, you know, a language that that, that, that just reached down inside them and spoke to them. And this speech is coming from a bunch of Galileans, Galileans who were probably not all that sophisticated, just regular folk, people who were fishermen and carpenters, tent makers, sheep herders, farmers, just average folk with limited means and probably not a lot of education. They probably weren't highly educated. They probably weren't world travelers. Yet here they were in Jerusalem telling about God's glory in a language that they probably, probably would have had no way of knowing. And the people gathered outside the house and whatever mayhem that occurred as these Christians were expelled from this house, they were absolutely amazed at what they were hearing. And maybe some of these people weren't able to hear this message in their own language. And they responded to this craziness by saying that all of these people that were speaking languages they didn't understand, they must be drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning, but they must be drunk. 
But Peter, ever the preacher, disabuses the people of this idea right away, primarily by pointing out the early hour. And then he quotes Joel, a prophet who all of those who were celebrating the holiday would have been familiar with. And in the passage that he quotes, Joel is talking about the Holy Spirit being poured out onto all people. Joel's telling people about this gift of prophecy that will be given to the people. Prophecy as in people being able to see right from wrong. Prophecy as in people being willing to speak truth to power. Prophecy as a way to empower people from many different backgrounds to join together and to bring about God's kingdom on earth. And this is something that we pray for each week as we recite the Lord's Prayer. You think about it. We're asking for God's kingdom to come and God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what do we mean when we pray this? What is it that we're asking for? You know, we know that God's kingdom is now for everyone, not just a specific group of people. And we know that God's kingdom involves love of neighbor and also the love of your enemy. Your love of a person who might not look for you, look like you, or might not vote like you, or might not think about money in the same way that you do or someone who might not even live in the same way that you live. The kingdom of God involves being in community with each other, spending time together, knowing each other, caring for each other, helping each other as we grow in our love for God and our love for each other. And the kingdom of God involves not only welcoming others and our com- not only welcoming others into our community, but reaching out and creating community beyond the walls of our church, beyond the walls of this building. And this is the way that we go about making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. It's through this gift of the Holy Spirit that we're able to do this. The gift of the Spirit empowered those in that room to speak out in other languages as a way to include everybody. And the Spirit empowers us as well to reach out to others and to share Jesus' message Jesus' message that is love and grace and hope and peace. Every once in a while, I'll come across a meme online or in other places that says in really large letters over a fist usually, introverts unite. And then in smaller smaller letters, it'll say separately, alone, in your own homes, And it always makes me laugh, not only because it's ridiculous, but also because I kind of get it. But I think that as a church, sometimes we have a similar attitude. We want to share the gospel with others, but we want them to come to us so we can share it. We want to reach out to people but we want to do it from the comfort of our own sanctuary with our own favorite music and our own favorite worship styles. And we want to invite new people into our space, but really we want them to be a lot like us. Now on the day of Pentecost, God's spirit was poured out on the people. And that spirit, just like that strong gust of wind, blew these people out the doors of the building to share Jesus' message, to share this good news that we're all beloved children of God. 
every last one of us from every corner of the earth, every place in society. And the Spirit empowered them to share that message, not only in the ways that they were familiar with, but also in ways that others could understand, in ways that deeply touched the hearts of others, and in ways that spoke to them in their own language. We may say that Pentecost is the church's birthday, but I think it's also the rebirth of the people of God. Those same people that followed Moses through the wilderness, those same people that struggled to remain faithful to God through famines and wars and exile, those same people who were empowered by the Spirit to go beyond what they knew to expand God's love to all. You know, we're all children of God. And gathered here today, we're all followers of Jesus. And I only hope that as the Spirit pours out its gift on us, that we're just blown out the doors of this building so that we can go out and reach out to those in our community and share God's love and God's grace with others. May it be so. Amen. And now if you'll stand and sing as a fire is meant for burning, the words will be on the screen. together to um, pray for those who we have concerns about, to give thanks for those many things that we've received. Someone gave me a bulletin. But on your bulletin each week, there is a list of people who are on our prayer list, and I encourage you to take your bulletins home and pray over these people each week. Um, 
one of the new names that's been added to this list is Velma Skelly. And she is the future mother-in-law of our new pastor. She's, um, she's Liz's mother. Um, of course, Liz and Chris, Pastor Chris, will be married in August. But she has been experiencing some long-term health issues. She's currently in hospice care. Um, and she's been having a difficult time as they get ready to move. So their family, I just ask that you pray for Velma because she's one of us. Let's go ahead and let's take a moment to be in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we are thankful for all of the gifts that you've given to us. We're thankful for the spring that is finally coming. We're thankful for the flowers that are bursting forth, the green grass, the warm days. God, we pray for the farmers. We pray for the sun to come out and to dry their fields so that they're able to plant and they're able to have a harvest this year. God, we are grateful for the church that you've given us, for the people who surround us, who we love and who we worship with, and for the people of this earth who are all also your children. God, we pray for our church as an institution right now as it works through the difficult issues of who's in and who's out, of who's, who's worthy of our love, even though we know the answer is that everybody is because everybody's worthy of your love. God, we ask that you be with the people who are deeply hurt by the decisions made by this church all the people, people on both sides of an issue. God, we ask you to be with those among us who are in pain right now, those who are lonely, those who are afraid, those who are ill, those who are hurting. God, we lift up the names of the people in our hearts. And we lift up the names of those who might not be thought of because, God, we know you know all and we know that you know what people need. We ask for you to provide them with comfort and with strength and with the knowledge that they are loved. God, we're grateful for your sending of the Spirit, for your pouring out of the Spirit over the church, the early church, on that Pentecost day. And God, we ask for the continued pouring out of that Spirit, the continued empowerment and inspiration of your people as we go forward on this earth, not only to build your kingdom, but to spread your love and your grace to all. And God, we pray these things in the name of your Son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and the glory forever. Amen. Bring your different gifts, your many languages, your unique ways of offering yourself to God and God's world. All of your gifts are welcome here in whatever way you are ready to offer them. At this time, we will take up the offering and the bells will play simple gifts.
Holy Spirit, bless the gifts we bring you with your powerful presence. Through these gifts, bring new life, new hope, new visions of life, new dreams of hope, and new possibilities for unity and love in our world. You may be seated. Will those who are helping with communion this morning please come forward? Christ our Lord invites all to his table who love him and earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with each other. You do not need to be a member of this church or any other church to take part in communion. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, you remained steadfast. Your spirit came upon prophets and teachers, anointing them to speak your word. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved son. With your spirit upon him, he turned away the temptation of sin. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your, sir, your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord ascended, he promised to be with us always, baptizing us with the Holy, fire, or with the Holy Spirit and with fire, as on the day of Pentecost. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he gave thanks to you. And he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples. And he said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave it to you and he gave thanks to you and gave it to the disciples. And he said, drink from this all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim this mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine 
Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood and empowered by the gifts of the Spirit. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, showing forth the fruit of the Spirit until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ, poured out for you. We will be taking communion by intinction this morning. You will be dismissed in rows by the ushers. As you come forward, you'll receive a piece of bread, and then you can dip that in the juice. And then as you return to your seat by the side aisle, if you would like, you can also stop at the prayer rail and kneel in prayer. We also have gluten-free communion available for those who aren't able to eat wheat. they are separate cubes and glasses here in the center. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come and be fed.
just received. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you've given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Oh, Camelie and Jared, would you please come forward? Up here, down there. You're good up here. <laughs> Although, actually, let's let's come down here. <laughs> Well, both of you have made this great achievement. You graduated from high school, and while it's a milestone that we expect everybody to complete, it's also one that takes an awful lot of work and an awful lot of effort. And so congratulations, both of you, on your hard work. And we also want to wish you good luck as you go into your futures. Um, I have gifts I want to give to both of you. These are Bibles that we thought would be small and easy to take into your lives with you as you go on. And so I would hope that you would be able to take comfort from those words when you encounter difficult times and um, create a good practice for yourself of reading the Word of God. Camelie will be staying here in Dwajak for a while. She's working, and she will also be going to um, SMC to finish her associate's degree. Jared will probably do some work this summer, too, but he'll be leaving in August to go to boot camp as a Marine. And I would like it if we as a church could all come forward and um, let's lay hands on these young people and send them off in a proper way. Why don't you guys come stand down here so everybody can reach you a little better. And if you're not able to touch them, touch the person in front of you. If you can't come up, if you just want to extend your hand. Yeah. Let us pray. God of truth and knowledge, by your knowledge we're taught the way and the truth. Bless Jared and Camelai as they now finish this course of study. We thank you for those who taught and worked beside them and all who supported them along the way. We walk with these graduates as they leave and move forward in life. Take away their anxiety and confusion of purpose. Strengthen their many talents and skills. And instill in them the confidence in the future you plan, where energies may be gathered up and used for the good of all people, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Congratulations. And now that we're all up here, if we'd like to just um, circle up and we'll sing our closing hymn.
are worshiping at Forest Glen at 2.30. Hope to see you there. And now receive the benediction. May God grant us all the opportunity to go out into the world empowered by the gifts of the Spirit to reach out to others and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen.